Hi friends, welcome back, or welcome if you're new. My name is Emma, and this is Emma's Cottage. In today's tutorial, I'm gonna go over some of the bleach effects I was showing you from one of my last tutorials uh, from designbundles.net. I was able to purchase this really great package, and a lot of you had questions on how I used that bleach template. I use it in two different ways, probably a few different ways, but I'm gonna show you two of the different ways today. So if this sounds like fun to you, tag along. All right, you guys, here we are in the designbundles.net website. Just wanted to quickly show you the bundle that I was talking about. So on my last tutorial, I was just going through this Love to Craft bundle, which is volume eight. I was showing you guys what a great bundle this is. It is still available as of today, May 1st, 2022. There's 17 days left that you could purchase this bundle. Um, but the one thing that we're gonna go over in this bundle today is this bleach effect package and how I use this when I'm doing mock-ups and just other designs. So if you're not interested in this entire bundle, then I will make sure that I also link the individual link for this package, just in case you're interested in just the bleach um, backgrounds and what we're gonna be doing today. So let's go ahead and head back over to Cricut Design Space. So here we are in Cricut Design Space, and I'm gonna show you how you can make this here. Let's get a few things out of the way. I'm gonna go ahead and hide this and we're gonna start over from scratch. So over in this right hand side, you can see that I have this whole section um, selected and that's why it's all somewhat like highlighted over here. All I have to do because this is one big group is just select this eyeball right there. Ta-da, it's all gone. And now I want to unhide these three things so that we can replicate what we just did. All right, so let's start by making this the biggest focal point. I'm going to bring this black bleach effect forward by right clicking and doing bring forward or bring to front. Go ahead and just bring it to front. We're gonna put it about right there. And as you saw from the mock-up that I had earlier, this was white, right? So let's go change this to white. Now you can see it looks really funky and that's because it's on a basic cut. And basically what that means is we're gonna see the cut marks and the cut marks are gonna show up as black right? Well, we don't want to show that. We want this to look like this shirt has been bleached. So to do that, we're just going to go change it from basic cut to print then cut and watch what happens. It's going to change it so that we don't see those cut marks anymore. And now your shirt looks like it's been bleached. I'm going to make this just a teeny bit bigger, maybe about like that. Let's center it into the shirt just a teeny bit more. And then we get our bear bring it over you can see it's not in the front of everything so there's a few different ways like I was showing you before you could right click on it and bring to front or I'm going to show you another way over here you can see the layers so we're just going to grab this layer and we're going to pull it up above that one and now it's on top so whatever you would like to do it's completely up to you and your preference so what we're doing here is we're creating a design so I love to sublimate so if I wanted to try and advertise this without actually having to go outside and bleach a shirt I now have my bleach shirt template right here. And then what I want to do is say, okay, I'm going to bleach the shirt and then I'm going to sublimate a design on it. So here we go. This is the design that I plan on sublimating on this bleach shirt. Then I want to have it say mama bear. So I'm going to go over to my text and let's bring this over just a tad over here so I can see it a little bit better. And let's just type in mama bear. All right. Now I wanna change the font. So I'm going to go and I'm gonna select, I think it's Cynthia that I really like when I do the mama bear. I don't remember where it's at, I'm just gonna go type in Cynthia. Let's try that, see what, yep, here it is, Cynthia. I don't remember if this is a Cricut, I don't think it is. I think this is one that I downloaded probably from fontbundles.net, but I'm not 100% sure. So right now you can see that this is a basic cut. When I do my sublimation, I like to switch it over to the print and cut. Let me show you why. I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger. So as of right now, you can see these cut lines, right? Now to get rid of those, all you would have to do is weld this together, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna go change it to print and cut. And now you do not see those lines. Now, another thing that I wanna do is I wanna separate these two words because I wanna line them up however I want. So to do that right now, it's all grouped. So if I click on this and click ungroup, you can see how every single word is now its own layer. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go highlight the whole mama and I am I can either group it or I can weld it. I'm gonna go ahead and just weld it. And then I'm gonna grab the whole bear 
and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to weld it or you could group it. The difference is, actually I'm going to group it so I can show you the difference. Let's group this one. So this is the difference. When we welded this, this all becomes one word now, one layer. When you group it, it's still four different layers. All right. Now I could still select this group and I can still weld it. No problem. The reason I like to weld is it minimizes my groups. I don't have so many different layers. Ooh, I love when this happens. It shows or it helps me show you how to make a correction. So you can see that when I welded that, it filled in the A. This happens sometimes. All you have to do is click the undo button. We're going to select this group. We're going to make it bigger. I have no idea why that this does it, but if you make it bigger and then click weld again, you will now see that that A does not fill in. I cannot tell you why. I have no idea why it does that, but it does. <laughs> okay. So I know if I were to bring these over, I can pick and choose where I want to place them. Like maybe I want one down here. Maybe I want the mom. I mean, it really, it's up to you and your design, like however you want it. Maybe I will do something like this. I know in the other one I did it differently, but I'm just playing around here. What if I wanted this? Oh, let's see. Let's change it to maybe purple. I mean, that could be kind of cute too, right? Maybe try black. So I know in the example I had before, I think I had it tilted like this. Grab this one. Let's change this one to black, bring it down, tilt it. And this is basically an exact replica, replica of what I already had. So just trying to show you guys how you can create these designs. So again, let me just grab this mama there that, oh, and by the way, I painted this. <laughs> this is one of my, I wouldn't say an original design because I took a class and painted the bear, but I wanna put these all as one. So I'm gonna group them together. And this again was just showing you, okay, here's my sublimation design. I could put it on any shirt I want. I could put it on a plain white shirt and then just put it on a mock-up shirt, right? But in this case, I want to be able to show what it would look like on a bleached purple shirt. So that's the whole reason I'm doing this so that you guys could, if you didn't want to go bleach a purple shirt, or maybe you haven't even bought any purple shirts yet and you just want to see what it would look like. And you're like, yeah, I really like this. I'm going to purchase some purple shirts and I'm going to sell this. This is a really good way for you. Sorry, I'm going to ungroup this because I don't like how far down that bear is. Get sidetracked here. Um, maybe you just want to test it out before you actually make a big purchase of, you know, 30 to 100 shirts, depending on what you're selling. And this way you can kind of play around and be like, yeah, I like this. I think this would be a good seller. So this is the first way that I like to use this bleach effect is by truly making it look like it's bleached. Now, one thing I want to point out here, you guys, group this together again and get it out of the way. For those of you that are new to sublimation, you cannot sublimate white. Absolutely cannot. Sublimation does not print white. So the only way for you to get this look is to bleach this shirt. And really quick, I'll just put this plug in here. You do not want to bleach 100% cotton. You want it to have some cotton, some polyester, because the polyester is what the sublimation print is going to adhere to. Here, adhere to. Um, but you also cannot bleach 100% polyester. So my favorite shirt is the Gildan. Uh, I always forget, I think it's a 6700. Um, but it's basically, if you look in the details, it's going to say that it's 65% polyester, 35% cotton. Those are the blends that I use when I'm sublimating, uh, bleaching and sublimating a t-shirt. So again, do not think that you can grab this with this bear and print it. It's not going to print. That white is not going to print. You actually have to physically take your shirt and go bleach it. This process right now that I'm teaching you is just so that you can visualize what it's going to look like. And you could also use this as a mock-up on your website if this is something you're selling and you don't want to go outside and bleach the shirt. Like maybe you want to see the interest. Are people actually going to be interested in this shirt? You're just putting feelers out there. And if a lot of people are like, yes, I love that shirt, then maybe go outside, bleach the shirt and see how it turns out. Now, one other thing I want to point out, you never want to false advertise. Now, depending on the shirt, if you're used to bleaching, there's some shirts that you may not be able to get all the way white. They may come more of like an off-white. So in that case, again, I don't want to false advertise. What I'm doing is I'm selecting this um, bleach effect here. And what you can do is you can come up here, go to the advanced, and then just mess with the different colors. See, if I just go down just ever so slightly, you can see now that it's not way, way, way white. It's now more of like an off-white, which may be the true effect if you can't get that shirt completely white. So just wanted to put that out there. All right, let's move on to another design. All right, in this design, it's gonna be the exact same thing, you guys. 
Instead of having it black, let's change it to white. And to refresh your memory, when it's a basic cut, you can see the cut marks. If I put the cut marks, oh, it's not in front. Let's bring this to the front. That does not look like a bleach effect, does it? No, it does not. So let's go ahead and we're going to change it to this print then cut. And there is a great bleach mark, right? So it looks great to me. And then let, let's pretend that this is the design. If you guys follow me on YouTube, I did another, oops, that's not what I meant to do. I'm talking while I'm trying to do, bring this front. Um, if you guys follow me on YouTube, I did another video where I came up with this design and I showed you guys some tips and tricks in Cricut Design Space to come up with this design. But look how cute that is. Like that would be the cutest. Again, I can use this as a mock-up to advertise or I can just use it to help show me, yeah, that would be an absolutely adorable shirt. Again, if you feel like you can't get this shirt to bleach all the way white, then just go back up here, go to the advanced button and just move it around just a little bit until you find, okay, that's more of an off-white. That's more of what it would look like when I bleach it. So just giving you some tips and tricks. All right, now let's move on to um, another way that I like to use this bleach effect template. All right, in this example, we're gonna be completely opposite of making it look like a bleach effect where I just want, let's say this, this material right here, this background, I want it to look like this. So I'm gonna show you how I do that. Now, one thing I did wanna point out, you can see over here, when I brought in this bleach um, template, I want to say this package came with like 14, 15, 16 different templates. Some of them came over as one and some of them came over as multiple, 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 multiple. Look at all these layers. It just goes on and on and on. And this takes up so much memory within Cricut Design Space and it will slow your design space down. So you have a few different options. One of them is you could go click weld, but I promise you, you don't want to do that with this many layers. It's going to take Cricut Design Space like an hour to get that welded together if you're even successful at doing that. So what I did is I went and clicked ungroup because right now they're all grouped together. And I just select anywhere and let's move this over. Now you can see here that this whole centerpiece is one. You can see it's this layer down here, right? Let's get that out of the way. In fact, I'm just going to hide it for a second. Then what I did is I went through, I'm going to hide this to get it out of the way and we're probably okay with that. What I did is I kind of selected it in quarters. So let's maybe go about right here and I grabbed this whole bottom quarter. And as you can see up here it, um, on the right hand side, all of the different layers that it selected, I'm going to go down here to weld. Now by selecting less layers, it's going to be quicker to weld it. Let me go back up so you can see. There is our first weld cut, all right? Now let's grab maybe this top section here. Actually, let's try about right there. Let's do the same thing with this quarter, right? Go ahead and weld it. Again, I'm just trying to get less sections so that it's easier for Cricut Design Space to weld. Let's just go ahead and grab this section, hit weld. And I may leave some out, but that's totally fine. We can do one big weld at the end. Grab a few here. Let's go, I feel like it's right about there. Hit weld. All right, now you can see I've got, if I scroll up, you can see this one here, this one here, this one here, this one here, right? Then you've got that one that I have hidden and it looks like I got most of them out, right? Maybe even this, oh, there's one little one that I left out. No big deal. What I'm gonna do now is if I grab all of those, if you look on the right hand side, you can see you've got one down here and these four. That's way easy to weld. There's not very many layers. We're gonna go ahead and click weld. Perfect. Now the last thing we wanna do is weld the middle section to those sections that we just put together. We're gonna to unhide it. We're gonna bring it back over. And really quickly to mention, I didn't need to move all of that. I could have just hidden that one, but I just wanted to show you guys. I'm gonna have this one selected and then I'm just gonna click my control button and select that. Now you can see they're both selected or you can just hover over all of them and they're both selected. We're gonna go ahead and click weld again. And you now have a completely welded in one, see right there, oh, okay, Cricut Design Space has been doing this. I have no idea why, it's like having a tantrum. So whenever you see it do that, which is not normal, it's just been today, I don't know what's going on, just undo it. Let's, uh, I don't know if it's even gonna let me, let's like, let's try moving it up. Let's try it again, go click weld. I'm hoping it'll work. 
I may have to save it. Nope. Oh, look, now it's having even bigger tantrum. I don't know why it does this, you guys. Again, it's only been today, so I'm not complaining. It's just a little bit of a glitch. Let's go ahead and hit save for a minute. Just going to try and troubleshoot it. Mm -hmm. All right. What I'm going to do, you can't see because I'm only um, recording half of my screen, but I'm going up to the file. No, nope, but view. And then it's force reload. I'm going to try forcing a reload in Quick Design Space and see if that helps. There we go. It's thinking about it. Okay. Now let's see if it'll let us do it. Now, highlight both of these. Got that one and that one. Let's try clicking weld. I don't know if it'll work, but let's try. Nope, it's not working. Hit the back button. Let me try one other thing. Um, let me push pause. I'm going to reboot the entire Cricut Design Space. I'll meet you guys back here in a second. All right, I rebooted Cricut Design Space, like all together, logged out, logged back in. Let's try, see if it's still going to give us a tantrum. And it is. Not sure what's going on. So those of you that are Cricut users, if you can tell me what on earth I'm doing wrong, <laughs> that'd be great. But I don't, let me just make sure there's nothing hidden that we could possibly... Yeah, nothing's in the way. I don't know why it's doing this. It's so strange. Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna try one more thing. All right. Shut down my computer, restarted it. Let's try one more time. Weld this together. And it's just having a tantrum. All right. Weird. Let's maybe try and switch these two. Maybe one being on top of the other is having a tantrum. Let's try that. No, nope, still doing that. I'm not sure why it's doing this, you guys. Okay, well, we are going to try one last thing. I'm going to grab this. The whole reason I'm doing this is because I want to cut this design out of this adorable purple plaid. All right? Now, for those of you that may be new to Quick Design Space, you can only slice something if it has two layers. So I can't, that's why I was trying to weld these two together but it's not gonna work. So I think I may just get stuck with just doing this one. So if I grab this one, I'm gonna hit the control button and I'm gonna grab my plaid purple. And then let's go ahead and click slice. Let's see if it throws a tantrum. Looking at the right hand side, it is, it's throwing a full on tantrum. The Cricut Design Space is not being nice to me today. You guys are bearing witness. <laughs> There is truly nothing that I'm doing wrong. It's just having a tantrum. Let's try deleting this. Maybe we just don't want that layer anymore because it's being mean. Let's try highlighting this. Or selecting it, I should say. Let's try slicing again. And it is still being super mean to me. I don't like it. All right. We are going to give up with this circle. I think that's throwing us off. We're just gonna go and select a different circle. Um, I think this one is one that comes in. Let's add this to canvas. Okay, so you can see this one comes in as one layer. It doesn't come in in all those different layers like that one came in. Let's just go ahead and set it here. Um, I wanna make it, you can see this looks more like a square. I want it a little more circular. So I'm gonna unlock the ratios here. I'm gonna bring it over just a tad, trying to make it a little more circular. Lock it again. Let's bring it here select both of them you can see over here they're both selected let's try slicing it and that's exactly what we wanted so i'm glad that it worked please don't hate cricut design space this happens sometimes when they do updates we're gonna go ahead and delete this one we don't want it we don't want this one either what i was going for was this right here isn't that adorable i love it so cute so this is another reason why I use the, the bleach template when I want a really cool um, outline of a design. I don't want it just plain purple, right? Now, I found a really cute design. I think I found this on, honestly, I don't know if it was design bundles or if this was Etsy, but I just thought it was adorable. So a few different things you could do. First of all, let's bring it to the front. If, you, if I put it over the top, you can't really read it, right? So a few different things you could do. Let's go ahead and change this to white. And to do that, see how it says it came in as um, 
I click on this again, it said it's an original artwork. So you would have to go and change it to basic. And then we can go and change it white, which I think is adorable. Another thing you could do is duplicate this. Let's move it over here. And I'm going to also duplicate this purple. Uh, duplicate. Let's bring it over here. And I want it behind this, so let's right click and send to back. Let's put this back here. Actually, let me get it out of the way just for a second. I'm going to show you what I want to do with this. Make this a little bit bigger for a second. And I'm going to click this offset button. It automatically comes in at 0.25, but to me, that's a little too big for what I'm going for today. So I just grab this little circle here and I'm going to toggle it a little bit to the left. See how much smaller that came in? I like that. I'm going to go ahead and click apply. And I actually like the way that looks. That's kind of cool. But I think I want to switch the two, maybe. Let me see. Oh, that's actually kind of cute. Maybe I'll leave it. Oh, I hate it when I do that. Let's hit the back button. What I'm trying to do is group these together. So I selected them both. We're going to group them so that no matter what, they will move together. Let's now grab my purple, and there we go. Isn't that adorable? I think it's so cute. So there's two different ways that you can look at it. This one is more of the cut line, but I kind of like the blue, or sorry, the black background. Now, one other thing I wanted to show you. You could actually switch these two. If I went to this black one, and I change it to white, and then go to this one, and change it to black, then you can get a totally different look. You could even grab this one and maybe try the purple, something like that, or a pink, or blue. Go to my advanced, click on pink. You know, lots of different ways of things that you could try. You can still see that cut line here. So all you have to do is go down to print and cut. Isn't that awesome? How cute. So super cute. This is just, again, another way that you can make changes to it, play with it. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna change this to, oops, I think I have the wrong thing selected. Yep, I have both of them. I'm gonna change this back to black, I think. Black, see, I think that's kinda cute. Let's go ahead and group that together. I can make it smaller. Let's grab this one. These ones are not grouped together, so I'm gonna go and grab them both, and then I'm gonna group them together, make it smaller. So let's say I just wanted to sublimate this onto a shirt. Now that I look at it, I definitely like this one better. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete this one. Now let's say I wanted to sublimate this onto a shirt. You could do like a purple shirt as long as you bleached it. Um, but let's just say I wanted to do white. If I unhide this template that I bought, I want to say I bought this one. It was either Design Bundles or um, Etsy. There you go. You could now put that on a shirt and say, yeah, that's adorable on a white shirt. Or I've got this template too. Do the same thing. And you're kind of messing with it, trying to decide. And then there you go gives you a really good idea of what it will look on a shirt. You can use this with your online advertising. If you have a Facebook group and you just kind of want to gauge what do people think of this adorable design that you just made, you know, maybe you're not even selling it yet. You're just saying, hey, you guys, give me your opinion. What do you think of this cute design? See how easy that is? And you don't have to actually go and waste a shirt and then you sublimate on it and you're like, no, I do not like this the way this turned out. It's not cute. I don't like the colors. I don't like this, that, or the other. Um, so this is kind of a way that you can do a mock-up to decide. Now let's say, you know, of course I did this whole thing to cut out um, this plaid, this purple plaid. But let's say you didn't like the purple plaid. Let's say you just wanted to change it all together to a completely different color. So let's go to color and let's just say, you know what, I want it red. You can go change it to different colors. See that? Oh my gosh, that blue is adorable. Oh, I love that. That's so cute. But do you see what I mean? Like you can go in here and truly just play with it and see what it would look like on a shirt and not have to sublimate the shirt, you know, in each color to decide what you want to do. I really think that blue is so cute. You know, you can even change it to a pattern. So all you have to do is go here, go to multiple, change it to pattern. And then literally you could go down here and just pick different patterns. <laughs> Isn't that adorable? Oh, you know what I did wrong? Look, I have both of them selected, that's why. Let's hit the back button. All right, you only want this one selected. Then you could go change it to a pattern. Mm, let's just pick. Oh, look, here's another. There you go, see? These different patterns, are so many patterns in here, you guys. So many cute patterns. And these are all great for sublimating. It would all be adorable. And you may say, Emma, how, how do you sublimate? Like, this is in Cricut Design Space and it only allows you to print and cut a certain size. Ooh, I have great workarounds for that. I have lots of other tutorials that show you exactly how I do that. 
Um, let me just go back to plain colors so that I can show you really quick. So let's pretend that you came up with this design, you put it on this template, and you're like, yep, this is exactly what I want to do. I would hide both of these, get it out of the way. I would make this as big as I can. And there's a few different options. You could either do a screenshot of this, or you can, if I always use Microsoft Word, um, but one thing that I've had a lot of people ask me about, see how you see these crosshairs? When, if you see those right now and you do a screenshot, you're gonna see those when you go to print it. So make sure that you select anywhere else it takes away those crosshairs. You could go to, I have a thing on my computer called a snipping tool. Most computers have it. You could go to new. And then what I like to do is I just like to highlight here. Oops, I cut it off, but I'm just trying to give you an idea. Do it again, because I cut it off. Something like this. See like that, I would go to file, save as, and then I would save this to my desktop, and then I would drag it and drop it into whatever program that it is that you like to print from. So that's how I would do my sublimation design. Or I like to do Microsoft Word. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and open up uh, Microsoft Word just in case you guys haven't seen my other tutorials. and make it a little bit smaller so that you can see. Here we go. So if you go to uh, insert, and then down here to screenshot, we're gonna do screen clipping. And just like the snipping tool, you can actually just go here and grab the dimensions and it will automatically drop into um, my Microsoft Word. Thank you guys so much for joining. If you have any questions, please be sure to leave them in the comments below. Don't forget to hit that like button, but most importantly, ring that bell so that you will get notified anytime that I upload a new video. Until next time, we'll see you later, friends.